let's take a look on the concepts of things that people have on the inside of them, since that's what we're talking about. Values, attitudes, and the resulting behaviors they have. All of these really play a role in the aspect of what we do and what we are in, in the workplace. And it comes across, especially when you're doing tough work together as a team. So let's look in the aspect of organizational behavior, how things happen inside the organization, and maybe we have a shot at predicting workplace behavior. Our values, what consistent beliefs we have, and our attitudes, consistent beliefs and feelings, and then the resulting behavior about how the values and attitudes affect their action. You know, we have the formal part of our organization, the goals, policies, and the hierarchical structure. You must have that in place. You also have this whole part that's informal, and it's called the values, the attitudes, the personalities, the perceptions, the, the, the conflicts that we have, and the culture itself. All that is informal, and a lot of it is not in writing. You True, you have some parts of your culture in writing, but the reality of the whole aspect of what is formal and what is informal, they collide in this thing we call an organization. And somehow you, in that pathway to leadership, you're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. You were all getting along as a team over here, and this next day happens, and boom, is it the full moon? Is it the, Was there something in the water that everybody now is fighting and feuding? And some of it may not even be work-related. People are carrying their burden outside of work, sometimes into the workplace, or too much of an overdose, or, or, or you don't know what it is. You can't predict all workplace behavior, but you can create an environment that's consistent. They'll know what to expect on a regular basis if you're sensitive to the aspect of what their values, beliefs, and feelings end up. So lifelong behavior patterns, they're dictated by the values. They're pretty well set by the time people are in their early teens. Pretty much 90% of your personality is fixed already by the age of 10. You'll have another 10% added to until by the age of 20, everything is locked in for your rest of your life unless you have what's called a significant emotional event, S-E-E, -E, and, and, and that could be anything that's going to be dramatic, such as the death of your parents, where you go back and, and look as to all they represented and all the values you have. You'll have a lot of different aspects of when you get older, and you may have children, family, whatever, then all of a sudden you come to a crisis. A lot of it's called the, the male midlife crisis, but women have one too. They're actually at different time periods and different reasons. But with that, you look on the different there aspects because we have multiple different transition points in our personality that's a little bit past the scope of this particular lesson. So, But you're looking on the aspect of everybody goes through this aspect. So what happens? When do we fully develop the executive function in our brain? The, the, pretty much science tells us that, that you have a myelin sheathing that starts at the back of the brain and moves towards the front. And the part up here, the executive function in our frontal lobes, isn't fully developed till 23 or 24 years of age and sometimes even 25. Then all of a sudden, the world has a different focus to it because of the fact that you've learned a couple things in the process and you're actually applying them on a regular basis. Your values can be reshaped, but with that, you're kind of locked in. By the time you're 20, you're going to think that the best music you've ever heard is the stuff that you're having right then and you're enjoying. And you'll believe that until the day that you die. You'll allow somebody else to have their stuff, but you'll still have that. You'll also have those values that you learned. And when somebody doesn't share them, you won't be able to understand why unless you work on that emotional intelligence unless you analyze your own values and pause and listen to their values, which may be totally different. It may not be anything on the outside. It could be just a matter you come from different parts of the country and you all sit down and you have a different kind of accent and you talk a little bit slower. And all of a sudden, you're, I, I can't understand why, because you talk so fast and everything else. And I always put ketchup with my french fries, but I like mustard. Well, I prefer to have some vinegar, because I'm from Canada. So you have something as simple as that. You can have a dialogue on and see how, how in the world is it that Canadians like to have vinegar with their french fries, and we prefer to have ketchup, and you prefer to have mustard. So you have all these different aspects, something as simple as that. There are different values, beliefs, and you sit down trying to figure out what's going on. But that being said, there's three components to the attitudes. The affective, the cognitive, the things you actually think about, and the actual outward behavior that you have. 
you really, when attitudes really collide, consistency and that cognitive dissonance, that fighting on the inside, you have to sit down and be a regular person. I've walked into work for years and I make it a point, especially when I was in administration, I would say good morning to everybody. Even if my morning wasn't good, even if I was stressed out, they don't need to know that. They don't need to know my anxiety and the different parts that I'm carrying with me. They don't need to know I had a good morning or a bad morning before I walked into work. They need to sit down and have a leader that's the same, 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 same. Your employees are entitled to have that same person working that job five to seven days a week. They're entitled to that. You need to deliver that consistency on a regular basis. Yes, you can get emotional. Yes, you can sit down and express yourself sometimes louder, sometimes quieter. But the reality is they're entitled to be treated by the same person on a regular basis and not have to guess whether or not you're Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Pay attention to who you are and make certain that you are consistent and that you're a rock they can lean on because you are the leader. Sometimes you're sitting there and you don't have a clue as to what is next. Welcome to leadership. But you have to put on the air. You have to put on this is your role to play sometimes. And you have to be the one that they turn to for the beliefs and feelings, especially on this aspect of behavior. Your values should be consistent from day to day. They shouldn't change from moment to moment. Your attitudes, they should be in harmony, but sometimes you will sit down and have some different conflicting aspects on the inside, but you need to sit down and make certain if you have that, that they understand what's going on. Put a positive value on helpful behavior, but sometimes you have to sit down and deal with the, with the negative attitude of an employee. But if you do that in a good way, deal with the behavior and not attack the personality, you'll be in good shape. Now, by the way, that's really hard to do. When you have a bad employee, it's easier to criticize them, but that is not your role. Your role is to criticize the behavior and the actions that you're doing. I had an employee, at one time he had a problem bowling, of all things, and I kid you not. Whenever you bowl at a bowling alley, bowling alleys seem to always have a bar accompanying you. He was a great bowler. When I talk great bowler, he bowled multiple perfect games. So whenever he hit anything close to a perfect game, people would buy him a pitcher of beer. Well, by the time it was all done, he may come home after two pitchers of beer. No matter what you're doing, your biology cannot handle that. You're called, you're called, you, you, you have a buzz, except for the fact the buzz is so big it's called being drunk. That was a problem when he came into work that day and we had a crisis and I found him sound asleep in the boiler room. I had to deal with the behavior. I didn't deal with the employee. I dealt with the behavior and I said, this is what you're going to do. If you don't do this, I will terminate your employment. That's how it's going to be. He enrolled 30 days later. He comes back. His behavior changed. Now, by the way, he never did like me after that, but I have a better employee because of the fact he got off being an alcoholic. He got off of that and he had to cope with that the rest of his life. But that reality was he became a better worker. That was my job. Meddling in the personal life is not your job, but the reality is if that outside life starts meddling into the workplace, you must deal with that. Or in his case, he could have been electrocuted and dead, could have sat there, done something else and hurt somebody else because of the nature of his technical work that he did. Pay attention because you'll have somebody like that similarly. It may not be as, as critical in the aspect of hurting somebody physically, but it could be a matter of they have issues you need to sit down and help them resolve those issues because you're a leader. There's four steps in the perceptual process. Let's look at the distortions and let's avoid that self-fulfilling prophecy. Selective attention. Did I notice something? Interpretation. Was it I noticed or what does it mean? Storing in memory. Keep it in your mind. Retrieving from memory to make judgments and decisions. Sometimes you talk to somebody and you go back in your office and you make a note about what, what you saw. And then you go back if necessary. If you want to fix it, then you may have to go back, document it, and sit down there and have a dialogue with them. Deal with problems before they become big. When they're just beginning, then they're not really, a, they're more of an issue than a problem. But they can grow into a problem and they can grow into a giant tree if you let it. So be careful, make certain your perception is good. Here are some distortions you have to avoid. 
stereotyping. Do not do it. It's, it's people that have small minds stereotype. Every They always do this. I'm sorry, you don't know who this person is. They are a unique individual. Treat them like that. Implicit bias. I just have a feeling about some people. I have issues with this person because of... You need to sit down and put that aside. You need to give them the opportunity to talk, to express themselves, and listen to who they have. One trait tells me, oh, I need to know because they're fabulous and I already know it. No, no, not everybody's always fabulous. And then sometimes you, you, something goes wrong and you, you're doing an evaluation over an entire year. And in the last month, they really had a crisis that didn't go well. And you sit down there and give them negative evaluation for the whole year. That's not fair. It's called the recency effect. And then sometimes you have causal attributions that you may have in the process as well. So be careful about these five different types of distortions because they may not be accurate. Expectations are important. Make certain that you sit down and have positive expectations and you express that, I think you can do better. I think you can do this. You can sit down there when they do badly. You can sit back there and go correct the behavior. Now, let's go back over what the expectations are and you talk to them. You deal with them. You try to develop them. If they leave, it's going to cost you money as an organization to replace them. Sometimes it's attributed to about six months salary before you can hire somebody else replace that person and get them properly trained to bring up the snuff. It's a financial issue, so deal with them, but also it's a human issue in the process. Managers, we're often people builders. Raise the expectations of the people you work with. Avoid those self-fulfilling prophecies. Look at the value of the person. Make certain you avoid that human factor because we're all human, no matter what, and look at each person individually without pre-recorded inside of here, perceptions. Everybody has a chance to be fabulous and you should sit down and expect the best of a person, not the worst. You should be that one that sits down, they can look back and say, I got a break because of that person, they believed in me. Be that person. Take care.